Hello everyone, thanks for tuning into our latest election uh, tracker. So uh, yeah, we started doing these around three or four months ago. Uh, every month we have a look at electoral calculus to see uh, what the latest uh, prediction is for the next UK general election. And uh, we will bring you up to date with the latest prediction for August, or from August. You know, uh, we do it a little bit behind, so we're in September and this is August prediction. And then September's prediction will be released in October's, in October's video and, and so on. Um, so so, uh, yeah, we're going to look at the opinion polls that were conducted during uh, August and what they were showing. Uh, we're going to bring you update with the uh, approval for uh, disapproval ratings for uh, Boris Johnson and also for Kisama. And we'll show you how the government overall is doing uh, as well. And I shall get on with it for you in a second. I'm a little bit late this month uh, doing this, but I'm, I'm in my very busy time at the moment. So it's just got to slot all of the other, uh, you know, extracurricular videos <laughs> in when I can because I am in my busiest time now. Uh, through to February, but I will continue to try and get one of these up every uh, month for you. So I'll get on that for you in a moment. Uh, we're going to go to electoral calculus in a second. Just say that if you're enjoying these uh, general election uh, opinion poll tracker uh, uh, videos and predictions, then please can you uh, like, share, subscribe. Thank you so much, everybody, for doing that. Right, so uh, last month the prediction was a conservative majority at the general election, uh, whatever it is going to be, um, of uh, 20 seats, I think. Let's see how the uh, tracker has changed or how the prediction has changed. So here we go. This is it then from Electoral Calculus. Uh, general election prediction for August 2021 is uh, current prediction Conservative Majority 16. So since we started these back in the middle of the summer, when uh, I think a Conservative majority of around 80 was being predicted, or maybe it was 60 uh, something, um, you know, it, month by month been declining, had another decline again this month, gone from a Conservative a predicted Conservative majority of 20 seats now to a predicted majority of 16 seats. So month by month, uh, uh, you know, the, the majority has come down. Although I have to say this isn't as big a drop um, from, from uh, like, this month as, as the previous month. So uh, a couple of times, like, the predicted majority halved. Um, now it's only dropped by around four seats. Um, but nevertheless, it is still a, a further decline on last month's uh, prediction. Well, I'll just turn up the webcam so I'm not obscuring you. This is how the uh, numbers work out then. So uh, what you have to consider with this is that this column is showing all of the political parties, Conservative, Labour, Liberal Democrat, Reform, Green, SNP, Plaid, others, down to DUP and whatnot. Uh, this is 2019's uh, vote share and seats. So in 2019 general election, uh, in December 2019, Conservatives got a majority of 44.7%, basically 45%, their biggest uh, percentage in a general election since 1970, which yielded um, uh, 365 seats. Uh, Labour were on 33%, which actually isn't as bad as they did, you know, percentage-wise. It's not as bad as they did um, in 1983, for example. Uh, and, and I think uh, maybe 1987, they even did a little bit worse uh, than that as well. Um, but seat-wise, they did uh, they did worse than they've done since I believe 1935. They uh, only got 203 seats in between December 2019 uh, general election. Liberal Democrats were on 11.8, basically 12 percent, and uh, they were uh, given 11 seats. With that, they are always impacted quite badly by first past post, of course. Uh, reform, or as it was then, was it Brexit? party um, on 2.1% and that gave them uh, no seats. Uh, Greens were on 2.8% and uh, that gave them one seat. SNP were on 4%, that gave them 48 seats. Uh, and uh, Plaid on uh, half a percent gave, um, gave them four seats and others and DUP and so on down here. So now, uh, based on the opinion polls conducted during uh, August 2021, the Conservatives are on uh, are predicted to uh, be on 40%. So obviously they've come down by nearly 5% since 2019 uh, general election, based on August um, opinion polls. Labour very unchanged, really, uh, on 33.4%. So they haven't really moved up. It's more the Conservatives dropping than, than Labour improving, to be honest. Um, since uh, since the general election, so so they're you know still stuck on on an average of thirty three percent based on all of the opinion poll conducted during August. Liberal Democrats not really doing uh, all that much better. In fact, they're a little bit down 
um, predicted vote share wise on 9.8, uh, hardly setting the world alight. Reform, not really doing all that much. So you wonder where the Conservatives' uh, 5% has gone, uh, really. The Greens are up a lot, so uh, the Greens have gone from 2.8 to 5.8%. In a general, you wouldn't expect that to be coming from the Conservatives, though, uh, really. In a general election, a lot of that would probably be shared between Labour and the Liberal Democrats due to, you know, first past the post and people not wanting to uh, consider that their boast is a little bit wasted on, on the Greens. So they would tend to transfer that probably. I'm generalising, but probably they would tra tend to transfer from the Greens to Labour um, and the Liberal Democrats. So you wouldn't have thought that 5% that the Conservatives has lost there. Um, since the 2019 general election has, has, come, has gone to the Greens, particularly. And, and then, of course, we've got the SNP. Uh, they're, they're not much change. Cause they're, they're about as high as they could get anyway in 2019. So so they're just up 0.2%. Applied unchanged uh, as well. Others um, are up. So uh, uh, quite a bit, actually, with the others. So uh, maybe some of the Conservative share has gone uh, to others. In terms of predicted seats, so um, the central projection for Conservatives is on 303 seats, and it's down from 365 seats that they got in 2019. Uh, Labour doing uh, quite a bit better, you know, or a little bit better, on 230 seats. That's up on the 203 they got in uh, 2019, but still really low. That's a very low, you know, seat number, 230, uh, really. Liberal Democrats lose a couple, going from 11 uh, to nine and uh, reform don't get any seats uh, despite the fact that the greens are up very significantly from 2.8 to 5.8 percent they still only get one seat again that's down to first pass both and uh, SNP uh, they go up to 55 percent which I think is just about all of the seats in Scotland uh, are, are taken by the SNP then uh, applied on four where they were uh, back in, uh, in 2019 and others don't get any. There is a margin of error with that, of course. So on the Conservatives' best day within the margin of error, they could get 411 seats. Um, and on their worst day, they could go down to 249 seats. Labour uh, could, uh, on their best day, go to 310 seats. And on their worst day, go down to 160 seats, which would virtually be like a wipeout. That would be the worst they've done since 1918. Liberal Democrats, on their best day, could go up to 31 seats or could go as low as five seats. Um, reform could get a couple of seats on their best day. Uh, the Greens, look at how uh, first past the post uh, treats the Greens. On their best day, they only go up uh, one and get two seats. And uh, the SNP, on their best day, they could get that final seat to take the whole clean sweep of Scotland and get 56 seats. Um, but on their worst day, uh, they could go down to 35 seats. Uh, but of course, that's, you know, the margin of error. This is the central projection just here. And so, although the Conservatives are down on where they were in 2019, they have still got uh, a majority of 16 seats. And Labour's still doing pretty badly, really, uh, on 230. Notice that even on Labour's best day at 310, that will still leave them short of a majority. So even, you know, even on their best day within the margin of error, Labour are still not getting to uh, 326, I think it is, that they need to get an overall majority. That would still leave, leave them in a hung parliament. Obviously, at that level, at 310, they would be able to do, uh, they would be able to govern either as a minority or possibly they could form a coalition with uh, Liberal Democrats and Greens, maybe SNP and so on. But uh, they would still be sure, even on their very best, day uh, of an overall majority. These are the opinion polls that were conducted in August that that prediction is based upon. Uh, so have a look at those, see where the Conservative lead is. Notice again in August all polls uh, were showing a Conservative lead. I did think that August might, because we saw a narrowing, you know, in the opinion polls, I did think that August might uh, show uh, a Labour lead. That has not happened actually during August. Anyway, um, all opinion polls during August showing a Conservative uh, lead. So you see it's varying from, from poll to poll. Generally in single digits, we have got uh, a couple uh, Redfield Wilton strategies on the 23rd of August have the Conservatives on 43 and Labour on 33, which gave uh, Conservatives a 10% lead. Um, and also down here, we get uh, Ipsos Mori. Uh, we get Mori giving the Conservatives 11% lead. They have uh, Conservatives on 41% Labour 
on 30%, which gives the Conservatives a 11% lead. Other than those two polls, though, uh, all the other polls have the Conservatives in uh, have the Conservatives in single digits. Some of them very narrow. So Cantor, uh, their Cantor Public uh, have the Conservatives on 37%, well under 40% in that particular opinion poll. And uh, Labour on 34%. Uh, Liberal Democrats on 14 They're doing a little bit better as well in that poll. Um, and, and so that uh, takes the Conservatives lead down just 3%. Um, and a Labour lead, you know, when you get to that sort of level, a Labour lead uh, within some polls could be expected, really, because it would only take, like, within margin of error adjustment for, for Labour to be either tying or, or slightly in belief. We also have another one, uh, Opinion, for the Observer, which has the Conservatives lead down to 3% there. Uh, that was from the 19th, 20th of August. Uh, 39% Conservative, 36% uh, Labour. Uh, otherwise, uh, most of the, uh, of the polls sort of have the Conservatives somewhere between around sort of 6 to 8%, I think. So I would uh, say that like the average Conservative lead is probably around 6 Seven or eight percent, eight percent there, eight percent there, six percent there, seven percent there, eight percent, seven percent, eight percent, eight percent, seven, eight, seven, six. So I think the Conservative lead is kind of somewhere, probably around seven percent in August. Uh, anyway, of course, what's happening in September, and there's been a lot going on in September with tax rises. And uh, <laughs> what not now, seemingly on the verge of an energy crisis. So what happens in September is uh, going to be interesting to see. But for August, I think the Conservative lead was probably around 7%, something like that. Uh, this is how the approval rating is looking for Boris Johnson in August. So uh, Boris has gone negative. Uh, Boris's approval rating has gone uh, into the red. You remember when we started these back in the summer, Boris was generally doing quite well for his approval. He was generally in the in the green, um, but uh, but now uh, his approval is, is red across the board. Some very negative numbers in there, particularly this poll here, YouGov, um, for the 17th, 18th of August, gave uh, Boris Johnson a, a overall negative rating of minus 25%. Uh, 34% approved of uh, Boris or found him favourable. 59% found Boris unfavourable in that particular uh, poll. Um, other polls not as dramatic as that. So uh, we've got uh, Red Bill Wilton up here right at the end of August, showing Boris's uh, next approved rate, uh, dis disapproved rate, I should say, at just minus 2%, which was an improvement from the week before, 23rd of August, found him at minus 6%. So maybe there was a little bit of an improvement uh, in Boris Johnson's approval rating as the uh, as, as August went on. Um, but generally, uh, Boris uh, was negative uh, and, and more people disapproved than approved of him quite, quite solidly. Um, during August. This is Keir Starmer's approval, and it's no better. In fact, it's probably worse, uh, really, which is something we've been seeing consistently. And for the leader of the opposition, you know, it's quite unusual for that to happen. Remember, the uh, leader of the opposition shouldn't really be all that unpopular because uh, they're not, the, the opposition isn't in power. So the opposition's not doing anything to upset anybody. Opposition's not uh, getting the blame for things that are going wrong in the government and, 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 and in the country uh, as the government is. So generally, uh, particularly midterm, you expect opposition opposition leaders to be more popular than governing parties and, and uh, the prime minister. But we see here actually that uh, Sir Keir Starr was also in the red throughout uh, August and uh, rather more so than, than Boris Johnson really on most of the polls. So uh, if we go back to Boris, we can see that uh, you know his uh, approved negative ratings are like into uh, in, into double digits on most of the polls. One or two have him in single digits, but into double digits on most polls. Um, but the worst one is minus 25 uh, just there, which uh, of course was that Yuga poll. But uh, this is what we see for Sir Keir Starmer. So he actually goes down to minus 30 on uh, on the Yuga poll uh, just there. And uh, otherwise, it's it solidly in, in single, in, in uh, double digits, I should say, except for one poll, which is opinion. This one just here, that has him at minus six. But otherwise, Sir Keir Starmer is uh, generally uh, solidly uh, negative and in double digits negative. So uh, again, we've got Yuga down here, well, badly, has him on minus 37 we have uh, Ipsos Mori 
satisfied, dissatisfied, has them at minus 26%. We have YouGov, as I say, has them at minus 30%, favourable, unfavourable. You know, there are various ways that you can ask question, approve, disapprove, favourable, unfavourable, satisfied, dissatisfied, well, badly. But however you word, <laughs> however you word it, uh, uh, poor old Keir Starmer is not doing particularly well either, and is probably overall uh, net uh, more negative in August than, than Boris Johnson was, actually, which, again, I have to emphasise that is quite unusual for the opposition midterm uh, to be in that position, the leader of the opposition midterm to be in that position. So neither of them are doing particularly well for out of the two. In August, September might change things, but in August, out of the two, uh, Boris was not as unpopular as uh, Keir. And finally, this is how the government uh, approval rating is currently looking overall. And this takes us up to current, uh, actually. Uh, so this is how it looks overall, and we can see that the government is getting more unpopular. Uh, more people are, this is from YouGov, more people are disapproving of the government than approving. You can see back in the spring, it actually got quite close between approval and disapproval for the government. But look how that's widened as we've gone through uh, the summer in particular. So now we have 50% um, disapproving of this government, of Boris Johnson's government, 27% approving of Boris Johnson's government of 23% do not know. It's interesting how this has changed through the pandemic. So this is where Boris Johnson takes over with his government. Of course, he takes over from Theresa May in July 2019, and at that point, he's uh, very popular. Um, that's uh, around where he was uh, at the general election. So, uh, again, more people approved than disapproved of the government around the 2019 general election. That is why the government won the general election. Into the opening days of a pandemic, uh, we have, uh, we have, of course, into the opening days. Am I talking about? No. So, uh, I've got that wrong, haven't I? This is disapproval. Just here, of course, that's disapproval. And this, uh, the purple line, is going to be approval. So, actually, when Boris takes over, of course, because Theresa May became very unpopular. So, when Boris takes over, uh, yes, uh, we see that the government is very, very unpopular. Uh, you know, massively so, actually. How could I have got that wrong? So 70% disapproval, uh, disapproved of, like, the government, uh, of the transition from Theresa May to Boris Johnson. 10%, just 10% approved of, uh, of the government uh, when Boris Johnson took over. Notice how that narrows. So as we go in towards the general election, which is uh, around here, we find that, you know, uh, the uh, still more people actually uh, disapprove but approved of the government at the general election but despite that they won a big majority probably because the opposition was even more unpopular. Ain't the over days of a pandemic and this is right now uh ain't the over days of a pandemic more people approve and disapprove of the government of course Boris Johnson becomes unwell and so people want and we're in a crisis people want to rally round the government and the prime minister it doesn't last all that long into the summer uh more people start dis uh, summer 2020 more people start disapproving of the government and, and their approval rating drops. That narrows then as we get into the spring of 2021 and the vaccine rollout. Um, and since then, uh, you know, uh, more people have started to disapprove uh, than approve of the government. I'm not sure that's overly dramatic, really, uh, that approval, disapproval rating. I'm not sure that's overly dramatic for, like, midterm in a parliament. That's probably about where you expect the government's approval and disapproval rate to be. Obviously, this is very dramatic, what we have here uh, at the end of Theresa May's government. 70% uh, uh, disapproval and just 10% approval. That is, that's very dramatic. Um, so <laughs> if we see uh, the government and popularity going up to around here somewhere, then that would show that the government is very, 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 very unpopular. As it is, I think this is probably about where you'd expect the government to be sort of midterm in a parliament. Uh, as I say in these videos, we are quite harsh on our politicians and our governments and so on. And so at the best of times, our governments will be unpopular. Um, and so will our prime ministers. And so generally will, will our political parties and, uh, and politicians and whatnot. 
So uh, that's brought you up to date uh, with uh, with everything. So there we go. I'll just put webcam back up. There we are. Right. So that's brought you up to date with uh, what's happened, you know, over the past, uh, what happened during last month, anyway, in, in uh, August. There have been developments during September. I tell you that there has been, and we'll look at this much more next month, of course, can tell you about in one poll during September so far, uh, Labour has gone into a lead. So that's the first time that's happened for quite a long time. So, uh, yeah, in one of the opinion polls during uh, September, uh, Labour has gone into uh, into the lead. Otherwise, so far, it was still only up 21st of September. So, so far, of that one poll, the Conservatives still have a lead um, in all of the other polls. So uh, we shall see what uh, September looks like when we do uh, the next update in October. If you are enjoying, so let's just go back to the central prediction. There we go. Central prediction uh, for August 2021 for the next general election is a Conservative majority of 16 seats. And we shall track how that changes next month. If you are enjoying uh, these uh, these uh, tracker threads, uh, tracker um, videos and, and whatnot, then please uh, can you, and um, predictive videos, please can you like and also let me know in the comments what you think, what you think about what's going on currently, uh, what you think is going to happen at the next election, let me know. And uh, thank you so much for getting involved in the conversation. Uh, so we did all over again in October, but for uh, this uh, September 2021 uh, uh, video, that's all for now. And thanks for watching.